Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Fad Daud. I talk about real estate, specifically in Dubai, but also internationally, your life and your path to financial freedom. Now, a lot of you might not know about this, but Imar is one of the premium developers, not just in Dubai, but in the UAE, the region, perhaps across the world. They've got 50,000 plus apartments, units, townhouses, villas, delivered across many, many, many cities, many countries, okay? I wanna share something. Uh, now, Imar has been in existence before 2000, it's 20 plus years that they've been operating. They've got a long history and a very solid credibility. And if you, any of you don't know about Imar, then Imar are the people behind Burj Khalifa and entire downtown Dubai. And if you've not visited, it's a great place for you to visit. Love for you to visit down here if you do. Give me a shout out, would love to meet up. Listen, I wanna share something about myself, my story, because I'm an investor, I sell real estate, uh, and I've been on both sides of the coin. I've made money, I've made no money, and I've lost money. Um, and I wanna share with, with you my first story with regards to Imar. This is back in uh, 2007, 2008. Uh, I started real estate in Toronto, Canada in 2005, 2006. Um, in 2007, I was born and raised in Dubai, so obviously, naturally, I moved back to the Dubai market because it was booming over here, right? By 2008, I had started a company with a partner, a senior partner, who was the majority shareholder in that company. I was uh, his protege, uh, and a partner in the real estate company and we had started you know wheeling and dealing trying to get our groove on and make some deals here and there and one of the things that him as an economist as an MBA uh, somebody who actually uh, established UPS in Canada so he was an international consultant and he had this awesome background and a mindful of knowledge with tons of experience around the globe we actually started believing that there was a little bit of a bubble happening in the market, okay? This is 2007, 2008. So what we started doing with our clients was advise them that the only developers that you should be putting your money in with are the developers that the government uh, has, uh, are quasi-developed, or quasi-government developers. So Nakheel, um, Imar, Dubai Properties, I think, was still was there at that time as well. Um, and, and we started telling people this, and we started telling them, you know, watch out when you're investing, because we were doing some financial advisory as well. We'd already seen the Lehman Brothers collapse, uh, Bear Stearns, so on and so forth. And we kind of took uh, our own medicine, right? So from all the consulting and the other work that we were doing, we kind of put half a million dirhams into real estate uh, off-plan deals as well. With uh, One was with the one government developer, I don't want to name them, but one was specifically with Imar. And this is how the story went, okay? Back in those days, Whenever a launch happened, uh, bless these good developers, they tried to make it very transparent, as transparent as they could. But in the initial phase, like the 2004, 5, 6, 7 phase, before the launch, people would be able to reach in the back door, through the back door, and basically just buy a bulk, full floors, full units, and you couldn't do anything about it except then buy from them off the secondary market. But 2007, 2008, Imar had started uh, organizing the launches. So you had to actually call in, try to book for an appointment if you, were, if you were blessed and lucky enough. If you could get an appointment, you're in. But then you had to show up with your passport copy, your checkbook and stuff so that they would know that you're for sure a genuine buyer and they would let you in. And then it's up to you whether you want to buy or not. But the process was kind of getting streamlined. But as the process was getting streamlined, global markets were crashing. But we in Dubai kind of felt, hey, we're immune. We've got this great real estate landscape that, that's happening. Prices are going to keep going up. They're going to go up to 20,000 dirhams per square foot. Sky's the limit. Even the sky's not the limit. So you know what? All caution thrown to the wind. We all invested in the market. And me and my partner, we were we considered ourselves. So this this launch was, I think it was in June or somewhere, May, April, June, somewhere around that time in 2008. We considered ourselves lucky and blessed enough to have received a token number to be able to get into the launch. 
yeah? Uh, I, I had to do some wheeling and dealing and use my charm on the phone. And, and, and finally, on a Saturday, glorious Saturday, we're in there, right? With our passports, our checkbooks, and we're in there ready to buy. The, the, the apartment building that uh, Imar was launching was, I believe it was called Claren 3. Claren 3. Um, I still have the SPA to prove it, okay? Uh, lo and behold, we're in there. We're very excited. Uh, but I, I have, I've got this somber mood around me. And the reason is, I'm going to state this very clearly. Some of, know, some of you know this, that for seven years, I lived in Toronto, Canada. And I went to a business school over here, over there. But to cut a long story short, I ended up running into somebody I used to know at university, right? And here he is trying to buy a multi-million dirham dollar investment. It didn't look the part, okay? Now, nothing against... You could, I don't, I don't, get, I don't care. I'm not going to judge what you wear to a launch, but you know, showing up in shorts and beach sandals uh, that aren't like the designer beach sandals. They're kind of like regular beach sandals. It just doesn't give me the kind of confidence that you like you're here to be do anything serious. But he was right. His uncle from India had sent him money to pay a 10% deposit on this apartment building, uh, buy an apartment, pay the 10% and then just try to flip it. Now, when I swear to God, right in there, I remember the story, right? My own personal story that I, not my own personal story, but something I've read about the stock market crash of the 1930s, okay? And basically, essentially what it was that, <sighs> there was this one man who right before the crash pulled out of the stock market, he sold all his stocks, right? And people asked him like, how did you know? Did you know the future? How, did, how were you able to foretell, foretell this? And he said, it was very simple. The shoe shine boy on Wall Street, while he was shining his shoes, gave him a stock tip. And, the, and when he realized that the shoe shine boy is giving me a stock tip, what he thought to himself was, now's the time to get out of the market because people entering the market have no business being there. And he did. When I looked at this person, I said to me, to myself in my heart, something bad is about to come, right? Like things weren't really, two and two was not adding up to four anymore. It seemed like five, but it felt like it might go to zero immediately. But my partner, he had his checkbook and you know, he was confident and we went ahead and we booked a one bedroom apartment. I believe it was a one bedroom apartment. I have to check my SPA again to get my facts correct. But one of the things that we had no idea about was by the time we got our turn, even though we were the first to register, there are some people who would still jump the queue and gotten a chance to get the nicer apartment. By the time we had our turn, the only one or the only two bedroom apartments that was available were on the podium terrace levels with huge, I think the, I think the terrace itself was 700 square feet. Now going by what I know today, I would have never bought that apartment unless, until and unless you've got a mindset to buy an apartment that kind, right? But here the sales girl was telling us, look, you've got this 700 square feet terrace, a balcony slash terrace. You can throw a New Year's Eve party, overlook the Burj Khalifa. You've got all these amazing things that you can use this terrace for. But lo and behold, what we didn't realize at that time is you're gonna end up paying service charges for an X number of years also on that extra space that really with Dubai in six months of not so great weather, you're not gonna be using that terrace anyways. But hey, didn't, we didn't know better at that time. I personally didn't know. We put down our deposit, we're ready to go. Units sold and locked in. We signed the SPA after a couple of months, all things are good. We take a break. My partner, senior partner, goes to the UK with his family to spend and splash his money and enjoy life, uh, which is what you should do, right? You've got your family, you should spend with them time and money on them. And I go away uh, to get married, right? And I come back to Dubai and we start with our real estate firm and we, we're doing and wheeling and dealing and trying to make deals. And then the first cityscape happens in 2008, which is I think October or September. And we see this like dead silence, right? People who've bought 60 apartments and have paid down payments are now chasing us and saying like, do you have a buyer for this? Do you have a buyer? We've got all our relatives invested. Anyways, things really didn't take a turn for the best. But the critical part of this story that I want to say to you is as bad as it got, the good developers like Imar 
made their investors whole as best as they could. Okay, what do I mean by this? There were developers who, because Dubai at that time, the regulatory framework, the escrow account, escrow account rule and law was just coming into effect. It wasn't already there, so a lot of developers ran away. The government, to their credit, picked up the pieces and made sure that a lot of these developments over the next 12 years got delivered. The few, a few of them that, are, that got canceled are still stuck, but a lot of them got delivered. Investors, if they couldn't get 100, 100 out of 100 on their money, at least got 50 or 60 cents on the dollar. Imar, what they did to their credit is they recognized the scenario and they put their good brains together and they said, look, we've done X number of launches. There's X number of buildings that we've got a lot of people who are now scrambling to make the next payments because these people, like we did, only bought to speculate. So they've got no money to pay us. There's no way that without their money, we'd be able to complete the building unless we borrow from the bank. So let's just consolidate. Allow these people in certain buildings. So I believe this was Claren 3 and they canceled Claren 3 and Claren 4, right? They didn't go forward with it. Claren 1 and Claren 2 got built. It's in downtown. You can still visit it. Holds good views of the fountains, Burj Khalifa, so on and so forth. What MR did was they canceled Claren 3 and Claren 4. And what they allowed is anybody who was invested in those projects could take their money and invest it in one of the other EMAR projects. Good, right? So far. So I'm whole as an investor. If I'm not a speculator, I'm pretty much whole at this point. Now, what if I was a genuine speculator and I don't have rest of the money to actually pay and buy, uh, and, uh, buy another apartment in one of the projects that Imar was completing? Imar allowed me another option. They started something called credit notes, right? Or the market started, I don't know exactly who started, but they allowed credit notes. What did, what did this was, if you had half a million dirhams invested into a particular project with Imar and Imar had now not gone forward with it and you don't want to put that money in towards another apartment because you were a speculator anyway, they allowed you to sell that credit note in the open market to any other person who has bought a property with Imar and needs to make further payments, right? So let's say uh, Miss XYZ from the US of A has bought an apartment in Clarence 2 and they've got still, we've paid 5 million dirhams to Imar on our apartment, but we don't have any intention and we don't have money to continue. What they did is allowed us to sell our, our credit of 5 million to this third party who could then use that 5 million towards the payment of their own apartment. To their credit, check this out. 5 million that we actually now had in credit with Imar sold to somebody else. That person bought it from you, whether 50 cents, 60 cents or 70 cents on the dollar. So you, instead of losing 100% of your investment, still got to make 50, 60, 70% back which was needed money at that time during the global financial crisis. And then they got to apply the entire 100% to their payment. So to Imar's credit, as other developers did, what they did is if you cancel and you didn't pay, other developers essentially just swallowed your money. To Imar's credit, because the other, because Imar could have done that, right? They could have just swallowed our money. Because other people who are still making the payments are still going to make them anyways. So Imar would have been half a million plus. But what Imar did is allowed us to sell to them, allow some money from them to come to us, and then let their half a million get, uh, get, get applied to their account, which was like a complete uh, full 100% getting applied. And what it allows is goodness to flow throughout the economy because the money we get we end up spending on our families we end up spending on our businesses we end up coming back to our uh, own on two feet uh, ourselves so essentially what i'm trying to say is like imar did well by its investors and i'm personally like a, a true story because it happened to me and my partner right I, we ended up getting part of the money back. I got a share of it. My partner got parts of it. Uh, and obviously, I was I was kind of like put more than just whole because my initial investment wasn't exactly 
monetary into the initial transaction. My investment was to secure the appointment, get out there, you know, uh, make make sure the booking's done on time. Uh, I was I was an equity partner in this. I wasn't. My, I, I was more like a sweat equity partner in the entire transaction. And when I got money back, uh, bless my partner, I was pretty happy about that, right? Because I put zero money down, but I put sweat equity, but I got more than just money. I got, uh, you know, his thanks as well because he had moved on to, uh, to the US by then. The point I'm trying to make is, during these current circumstances, it's very important that you, when you're investing, look to invest in developers that are hardened and credible and have good reputations for delivering on the promises that they've made. Not just to you today, but to the people in the past and then they've actually delivered on those promises. It's very important, very critical and something that you want to consider. And this was my personal story with Imar. Imar is one of those developers that lo and behold stand tall above all the other developers. I'm, Telling you, trust me, if you're investing in Dubai, MR is the way to go because what they say on the tin can is what they deliver to you. Um, that's not to knock other developers. There's others that are good as well, but you got to do your due diligence, right? This is my personal story. I thought I'd share with you. And can anyone guess? I'll tell you this. How much I, we bought that apartment for in Clarence 3, the per square foot price was 5,000 dirhams per square foot. But there's no way that had the MR actually delivered we and we bought that apartment, we would have been able to make our money back because it, the price was just unrealistic. The Dubai market is in a very realistic uh, arena right now. You can touch and feel what you buy. You can take advantage of the current circumstances. Reach out to me, hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon. If you've got specific questions, reach out to me on WhatsApp. I do charge to help you on specific questions and then guide you through them. If it's general, ask me by all means on WhatsApp or in the comment section below and I'll answer on YouTube so that others can also benefit. Ciao for now, catch you on the other side.